unfortunately being a content creator doesn't mean only create beautiful content, take amazing pictures, shoot incredible videos, but it comes with loads of different things. Because at the end of the day, if you wanna be a content creator full time, you need to make money somehow. And in this video, I want to explore with you several steps that you can embrace if you wanna become a content creator full time. But first, let's run the intro. What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Simone, and in this channel we explore strategies and tools to improve our photography, videography, and everything that is related. So a few years ago, I had a passion which was basically making videos. It was only a game, and I was doing just for fun, uh, shooting on my own, using a GoPro, and this sort of stuff. But then I started to post things online, and slowly people started to reach out and ask me for my services, like how much if you wanna make a video for my business, for my restaurant. So I started thinking, okay, this sounds pretty cool. Like, let me try to do it full time. I started investing in a little bit of gear, started studying a lot more in depth, like professional videography. And slowly I was able to transform it into a full time job. And online, honestly, I can see a lot of people asking me how to take this to the next step, how I can make money with photography or videography. And the problem is that it's not only about just taking beautiful pictures or shooting incredible videos, amazing editing, so on and so forth. But it's more like if you want to be a content creator, you need to make money out of it. You need to live out of it somehow. And I hate to say this because as a passion, you don't want to exploit people. You don't want to ask people money. But at the end of the day, we have bills to pay. You may have rent, you may have kids. So you gotta find a way and this is totally normal because this is a business. And even if you're not charging directly your clients, but maybe the brands are paying you, that's something that you need to think about. How can you reach maybe that brand? So the very first step that you need to embrace if you wanna do this full time is that you need to create a need. And for example, if you're creating a product, that product has to solve a problem. But if you're shooting photos, what kind of problems can you solve? Well, there are loads of things that you can think about. If you're shooting on a wedding, well, two people, they want just beautiful pictures that they show love, that they show fun during their weddings. Maybe they want a pre-wedding photo shoot and all these kind of things. If you're like me, you don't do wedding, but you just create maybe tutorials. Well, you can create a need by showing your skills, your tricks, and therefore people would love to know how you did that kind of photo, how you did that kind of video. And therefore this is a need that they have and you'll be able to monetize directly or indirectly about that need. It's really about thinking how you can create a sort of a problem, a sort of curiosity that people want to know about. Whether it's a product or a digital service, that's the concept. And the main thing is, if you're solving that problem, what kind of benefits can you add to this? So if a person watching my tutorial, I'm creating a need that they want to know how I created that kind of photo, well, the benefit is that they can create the photo themselves and therefore maybe have a better audience on IG or maybe they'll receive a brand deal because they're creating amazing content, so on and so forth. Think about creating a need, solve that problem and add benefits to it. And the second step is adding value to that need. So if your plan is not to monetize directly to your audience, then you need to think of these brands. What are they looking for? What kind of value can I add to these brands? Right now, you might have seen a lot on my Instagram and TikTok lighting tutorials where I mention Nanlite. And this is because I just love Nanlite products and I think they can benefit you a lot. But also Nanlite is being benefited by me, by my tutorials because you guys can see that I created this picture using this type of light and therefore you're more willing to try this type of lights. So think about the brand as well and how you can add value to your audience using that brand and therefore that brand will pay you to do this and therefore you're going to create an income. And there are three main ways on how you can collaborate with brands. The first one is just one of projects. So they send you uh, the gear, maybe they add some financial rewards. You make one video or two videos, the agreed number of videos or photos about that product and that's it. The second way is ambassadorship. You basically receive a monthly income in exchange for usually exclusivity. So for example, I'm a Joby ambassador. So I receive an income from them in exchange for mentioning them and suggesting their products to my audience at any time during the kind of year of contract. Plus obviously not using other brands gear. So it's kind of exclusivity contract, but that's what is about the ambassadorship. And the third one is cross-platform 
collaboration or long-term partnership, which is in between the one-off project and the ambassadorship. So maybe they send you products every month and you need to make one video every month, but without a fixed income, more related to maybe that project itself per month and the rewards maybe change based on the project, the length, the difficulty, and so on and so forth. Or if you don't wanna rely on third parties to pay you, such as brand deals, then you can create your own products. And the benefit of this is that it's very low maintenance, has a huge reach because when we're talking about digital services for content creators like presets, courses, uh, maybe shout outs, collaboration, one-on-one, maybe Zoom meetings, all these things, they have a massive potential reach because comparing to a physical store that a person has to walk in with the internet, you can reach basically the whole world, just maybe sponsoring your post or posting online. Plus the more money you make, then you can pay Facebook ads or Google ads and all the ads in the world to reach more audience. Then the third step, if you want to be a full-time content creator is thinking about marketing and the way you're gonna show your products or your services or your sponsored post to an audience because these brands will pay you if you have an audience. If you have no one to show it, then it is very difficult that they're gonna pay you. So marketing is a very key part and is a huge, huge topic. And this is actually one of the biggest problem for content creator, as I can see from Instagram, because people, they just create amazing photos, amazing videos, but they don't know how to put it in front of an audience. They don't know how to get that organic growth that will bring you money from third parties or from your followers directly, if it's about your own products. So this means, thinking about personal branding, thinking about logo, thinking about your phrases that you use a lot, thinking about an hashtag, thinking about a website, thinking about a link tree, like a link in bio that you have on maybe TikTok or IG and all these kind of things. These things take time, but it's crucial. It's really, really important maintaining the same style over and over so people can recognize you easy when they see your content. Just giving you an example, in my website, in my YouTube thumbnails, in my covers and everything about whatever I write is always on the same font, it's Montserrat. This doesn't mean that I'm the only one using the same font, but it definitely helps because it's one of the elements that I use every single time wherever I post things online. And before we move to the fourth step, I'd like to remind you that clicking that like button is absolutely free for you, but it really helps a lot making more free content for everyone. And obviously if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed past videos, feel free to click the subscribe button. All right, back to the video. And the fourth step that you need to think about is the sale process. So as we said, whenever you have a product or the brand is paying you to do something, how you gonna kind of sell or promote this product? Well, there are a few ways on how you can do this, but the best way is always be genuine and try to create that emotional attachment with your audience. So try to engage with them, try to reply to all your DMs, reply to comments and all these things. Because especially in social media, at the end of the day, people are people, even though they're behind a screen. And therefore, you need to create that emotional attachment that will enable you to sell something to them. Remember, having followers doesn't mean that they'll buy from you. So for example, a person that has 10K followers on IG might be able to sell much more than a person who has maybe 500K because of that difference, that emotional attachment that they will able maybe to create in the small audience. The fifth step is thinking about complaints. So let's say you're selling your own product. What happens if a follower buys it, but then want to refund? because maybe they don't like it, maybe they think the product is garbage. And you gotta think about this because whenever something is growing, there's always gonna be people who complain. And the strategy that I use is that I guarantee my products for two weeks. So for example, if you buy my courses and you don't like them, then within two weeks, you can ask the money back and with no question asked, I'm gonna give you back the money. And you might think, okay, but with digital products, then people can steal. All right, that's the truth, but at the end of the day, the majority of people are honest. So it could happen that maybe a couple of people will just ask for fun because they want to steal money. But you know, they're not going to make me poor and they're not going to make me rich, these two people. So I prefer to give my guarantee to people because I believe in integrity and honesty. So it's totally up to you how you want to manage this. But I really suggest you have a sort of customer service. And then the last step is what's the next step? If you want to be a content creator full-time, you cannot rely on today's trend, but you need to look in the future. 
think about the next product that you can create or how you can make a better version of the one that you have right now. Things will be evolving. As you can see, Instagram changed it from being a photo sharing gap to now a video sharing gap. So what happens with photographers? Well, they're screwed. No, they're not screwed. They simply need to adapt and maybe showcase their photos into maybe videos as I'm doing right now with reels. Even though I love to share photos, it's much better if you post reels because the organic growth is just much better. So at the same time, if you wanna be a content creator full time, you need to have that vision of the future. Think about how you can create the next hit. Think about how you can create the next trend yourself. Think about something that your audience will want to have in the future, maybe in a month, maybe in a year, maybe in five years. And obviously you need to take care of yourself during down moments. There's always gonna be some doubts, there's always gonna be some self-reflection when you want to abandon everything, when you wanna give up, but that's what you need to prepare in advance. Make sure that you're ready when these kind of moments will arrive and you're still gonna think, oh, I'm gonna give up even though I knew that these kind of things were coming and blah, blah, blah. No, just be prepared and keep going. Because when you're opening a business, when you are freelance, these kind of moments will always arrive because it's not about getting a salary paycheck to paycheck, working nine to five, but it's about finding your own motivation, your own clients and your own way through. So having that vision will surely help. And obviously, like with every business, like with every freelancer and content creation, you need to take your own responsibilities. There's gonna be some projects where clients, they're not happy with your results and you need to think how you can solve the situation for them and for yourself as well. Because yes, you're gonna hurt the client, but mostly you're gonna hurt yourself. So take your own responsibilities and be aware that things might not go 100% as you want all the times. And there you go. If you follow these six steps, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to make it and think about long term. So don't start now thinking that in two months you're gonna make 5,000 US dollars if you've never made a single penny before through content creation because it's absolutely not like this. But if you're interested in the topic, I'll leave you two videos right here where you can learn more about business. This is about charging more your clients if you have already a pool of clients and this is about finding your first paying clients. I hope you enjoyed the videos. Feel free to subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.